the first in the following I'll talk about using the average nearest neighbor distance as a tool for testing for complete spatial randomness of point data. The idea is that if we look at some point data, if they are clustered, the nearest neighbor will be small closer together or closer to the point than if they are distributed. Okay. So we have and somewhere in between we will have random points. So if you have clustered data, the nearest neighbor will be closer than will be expected from random points and dispersed data, so that's a negative spatial autocorrelation, will have a higher nearest neighbor distance than random points. Okay. Because if they were random, there will be some of them that are close together and some of them that are far together, but the nearest neighbor will on average be higher if they're using random points and if they're using dispersed points. And of course in the highest or the smallest, um, the closest neighborhoods you'll find if they are clustered together. So we have these, these, this point, even though it's far away from that point, its nearest neighbor will be that one and therefore that will have a high value. So we can use the nearest neighbor distance as an indicator of cluster, not cluster, or randomness. Um, and like the other tools, it will use this null hypothesis of randomness, or complete spatial randomness, and test, and test against that. Um, it will calculate a ratio of how, what is the distance compared to um, the complete random distance, and that's what will be our C-score. So that's that ratio we will be looking at. Um, if we look in, um, let's start with looking at um, how it looks in ArcMap. So I go to ArcMap and um, I have here my uh, goldsmiths and if I want wonder, hmm, are those goldsmiths randomly distributed throughout my screen here or my area? I can use my tool, my average nearest neighbor, and run that on my goldsmiths. And it can do a Euclidean distance on Manhattan. We want the Euclidean, and we want a nice little report. It has an area here that we'll come back to in a moment what that why that is. Just run to the result of this is this tool up here. I can open it. Uh, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. I can expand it and we can look at our messages, view it, and we can see that we have a extremely low probability of this being random and we had a C score of minus 14. It also says that what it had if they had been randomly distributed it would have expected that our goldsmiths would, would have been the nearest neighbor would on average have been 318 meters while the observed nearest neighbor to a goldsmith is 165 meters. So our observed is much, much lower than our um, expected, and that ratio in a normal distribution is what gives us this um, C score here, indicating a negative value, indicating that they are clustered. So we could read this out from the message data set. We can also look at our report file, double click on it, and it will show the same graphical data we'll see where we are and we can copy this into our output and basically we have exactly the same data set we had here with our measured 
uh, nearest neighbour distance and our expected and our ratio between the two and uh, so it's about half and what that means is a c-score and the probability of this being random and then some basic information about what the data set was and here we have a study area this size here is the one that it has used and what it does is that it calculates it in a enclosing rectangle around my points and then uses that for the calculation this is a bit dangerous because if I'm going to compare different data sets I'll have different areas to compare to look on so what we typically do is that we specify a frame that we're working in so that we know that all the data sets we're working in are within some specific frame if I look in my folder that's frame so this is my data set that I'll be looking inside so I will be ignoring those points out there um, and just working with this data set um, in, in this area and I'll be comparing them to um, this exact frame to ensure that in the calculations that I ignore those out there I'll start out by ensuring that my processing extent is set to my frame same as frame so now my processing will be within this frame and if I want to know how large an area I might just use my eye tool and get information about this one and how large that is so I've calculated how much large that is and I'll just copy that value so if I want to do the calculation so I could compare green grocers to goldsmiths I need to ensure that it's the same size because this these indices of nearest neighbor is extremely sensitive to what area it's been calculated on so when I want to rerun my tool in my news environment I just go down and find it um, and then space paste in that area that I had copied like that and say I'll be using my goldsmith data set and the Euclidean and I will like a report one the two my new one here remember from before I had a C score of minus 14 of my new configuration I have a C score of minus 17 so it has changed because I've specified that we are only working this area and we have excluded those points out there so this is our um, new data set and I can do that comparable with green grocers and things like that because I have a frame and that's my processing extent and the data set that I'll be working inside um, it's still an extremely low C value and that's because it's really a wee bit silly to do this because well green grocers can't locate themselves anywhere first of all they can't locate themselves out in the ocean so if we oops look at Copenhagen well this is an ocean area and this is a harbor area um, and that is a wee bit silly to expect that we could have points there um, to work with that I have created a version, new version of my frame which I'll call land frame dissolve because I have dissolved my individual islands I have small islands out here that they could be on and there's also some area here so I have created one big object of land mass that's this dissolve tool and this has this area here okay and my green grocers can only be oh, sorry my grocers can only be in this area so if I really want to do my calculation I should say hmm, instead of doing what I did before or running with this 14 this number I'll replace it with my land mass area okay. and I can rerun my tool on well, this area as my limit 
So now if I now look, what has happened is that my C score has fallen a bit. So it's they are less clustered or a wee bit more random than they were before because that I'm only calculating on the distribution within the landmass. There is still a really significant problem here. And that is that what the tool does, it calculates the expected distance between these on a square given the area that I've specified. And this is not a square in any way, it's a different shape. And the further you move away from the square shape, the more or the less random your parts will become anyway because that they can't locate themselves as they will. So as you move away from the square shape you are changing the possibilities of the parts to locate themselves and therefore this is not really a reasonable test for randomness because they can't, this is not a square area. If you wanted to use this tool uh, in a reasonable way, you could only look within one complete square of the area and only look at that area. So, there are some problems just by looking at how the tool works. Um, we can, um, however, compensate a wee bit for this. We can compare it with other points. So we say, okay, so this is our um, greengrocers, but what if we did place random points in the landmass? How would they distribute? How clustered would they be? So how, what would the C value be? And ArcMap has a tool for doing random um, points. And as I say, if you want to do a real test on this, you should run a lot of runs. Um, I'll just be showing it with a single one. And uh, you could put a mod and that, run that test a thousand times or whatever, and that should give you a reasonable result. But here I'll just show it um, for testing for how can we place random, how random would random points be if they were placed only inside the area, the landmass. So if we um, go and find our tool for randoms, and we can't remember where it is, and I can't, we can go in and use the search tool and type random or something like that. And we will have a create random raster, create random points. That's the one I need. So that can create random points. And uh, so I want to have as many points as it has Goldsmith, so I can go in and open the attribute table. And I can read out that there are 251 goldsmiths in this data set. So I'll create 251 uh, data sets. Let's call this a random. I'll constrain it to a feature class. And I only want them in my land. I specify the number of points. One, I have specified that they have to be inside my landmass, um, and that's it. I'm ready to run, and I now have 251 randomly distributed. So those are the red ones, compared to the blue ones, of which were my real observations. Let's make those yellow so we can see them easier. So. The yellow ones are my observed greengrocers and my ready dots here are my randomly distributed points, same number of points randomly distributed within the landmass of Copenhagen. So I can now do a comparison of those two. So I go down and take my average nearest neighbor and run it on my random points. 
my random points and I only want it inside the land mass which I have to check what that was so I'll go my data set and I'll I click there and I'll copy my area of the land mass and I'll paste it in so are these random points that are distributed within this area here and because I want a nice report I'll just check this one in so it will generate a report and run the tool the question is now are these points randomly distributed sorry and I can look in my report of course or I can look in my messages I just look in my report and my random points here are more distributed than is expected which is a bit fun um, so my random points are not random okay. they're not randomly distributed they are more uh, dispersed than expected and uh, my observed mean average distance is higher than expected and that's because that the distances from some of these they can only be located in their land mass and not a square so they will in general get a higher distance than if they had been distributed randomly in a square of the same area as the land mass here and therefore by default we will get a value even though they are random distributed and our map creates okay randomness they come out as being more distributed than expected simply because of the shape of Copenhagen so we'll have to compare um, our points the clusterness of the clusterness of random points and that means that our points become even more obviously clustered than we have expected from before um, the next issue is that well okay we have said that they can they can only be located on land mass but really that's not even enough because they can't be located in cemeteries and sports areas and basically they need shops so our goldsmiths have to be within an existing building so the restrictions on where they can locate themselves are much stronger than just that they have to be on the landmass they have to be located within an existing address so if we're going to test for our randomness we should really compare our observed green grocers sorry oh sorry our, our observed goldsmiths these on random points on top of addresses we have our address data set so what we really want to come investigate is given that green uh, so goldsmiths only can locate themselves on a address point so these address points we have here um, are they then randomly distributed have they located themselves on a random point or are they clustered so we're going from saying they can be inside of this area so they can be inside the land mass saying oh that's not even enough they can only locate themselves on existing addresses but addresses are clearly not random if we zoom in on our addresses we can see that they are aligned along streets surprise surprise so it's a wee bit silly to compare the location of goldsmiths to something that's completely random because they can only be located at addresses in this case so we'll use our random tool but then this random tool has an extra little feature before when I run, run my random tool I said 
um, and if I can search for it, I can find it again. Uh, my random two is that I just call them random address because we had a constraint uh, on our addresses where could they belong and our constraint feature will be addresses so now instead of saying that they what I did before is that they had to be in my land area I now say that they have to be on an existing address so my data set has to be on an existing address I still want 200 and 200 sorry 251 random points but I want them to be located where there is an address already so this data set here will generate 251 random points that are located on top of an existing address so I can make these uh, green triangles so my red dots are my addresses my yellow ones are my observed goldsmiths and the green ones are 251 randomly placed points on top of an existing address and if I want to compare that then I then go and run my average nearest neighbor tool on my random addresses uh, within the same area that I had before I don't know if it's in my paste. Yep, still in my paste buffer. Because they are still within the, uh, the land mass. And this data set now describes how random are randomly chosen points on addresses. And we can see now we have a very different C value. So if we look at our output report, we see that randomly chosen addresses are highly clustered okay. and the question is then the only thing we can say given all these restrictions there is on data sets is that are our green grocers more clustered than randomly chosen addresses so we have a C score of minus eight for randomly chosen addresses while we had a c score of minus uh, 16 for our uh, randomly chosen or for our sorry for our um, existing goldsmiths so there's they are more random so they are more clustered than randomly chosen addresses but we now can't test our null hypothesis. If you want to do a new test of null hypothesis, you'll have to do a series of a thousand or whatever null iterations over taking random addresses and then compare that nearest neighbor with our nearest neighbor distance of our goldsmiths. And then we could make a test, but that would need you to do some programming, and we don't cover that in this course. So we can say with certainty that grossmiths are not random distributed but that's really not really interesting because addresses are not randomly distributed but what we can say is that without any talking about statistical significance that our goldsmiths are more clustered than randomly chosen addresses and the ratio is that randomly chosen addresses have the C score of minus 8 or a observed distance of uh, 249, while we had a observed distance as I think I mean, this is our uh, addresses from before. And what did we have as our 
observed distance here, we had a observed distance of 165 meters. So, randomly chosen addresses would be distributed with a nearest neighbor of 249, while our goldsmith has a nearest neighbor of 165. So they are clearly more clustered. What we cannot do a statistical test for this.